Now we're going to move to Tyler into kind of our, uh, we've kind of combined our uh, revolutionary green tech and regenerative agriculture superheroes uh, segments for today. So uh, very excited uh, for everyone to see what Tyler is working on. I really blew my mind. Uh, and so with that, uh, please take it away, Tyler. Sure. Thanks, everybody. And um, appreciate the opportunity to sit here and share what we're doing. Um, I'm the director of ESG and sustainability for a um, for Gravitas Infinitum, a sustainable impact holding company. Um, we've got several companies, um, and we're focus around our focus is around uh, solving uh, the planet's most challenging problems. And um, if you look at the the total global economy, and we're all talking about you know shifting towards a circular economy, um, only 8.6 percent of the world's economy is circular. So. What does that tell us? That means that there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and so what I'm going to go into here is Carvatura. Uh, we've spent the last several years integrating technologies, um, uh, um, funding, um, and implementation. Uh, our CEO, Alan Witters, <clears throat> um, is uh, uh, just incredible. He, his background, um, designing things from you know, nuclear subs to satellites and all kinds of things in between. Um, and, um, and so what we've done here is integrated um, proven technologies as, as well as funding um, to deploy uh, uh, basically services and technologies to untrash the planet, both our waste streams, solid waste streams, as well as atmospheric waste streams. Um, and you know, from first principles, uh, what we're doing is we're 100% um, waste recycling. Percent. Is there a dog barking in someone's non-muted background? <laughs> um, zero waste processing, zero emissions processing, creating renewable, reusable materials, carbon capture, virtual landfill and landfill mining, uh, renewable energy, energy renewable uh, microgrid, and uh, we are a for-profit uh, business. Um, Carbatura zero fill, basically recycling everything with zero waste and zero emissions. Everybody knows around the world that we're dealing with a pretty existential crisis. Um, you know, you've got about 11 billion tons of trash created a year. You got about five times that going into the atmosphere um, as far as uh, CO2 and greenhouse gas equivalents. So we've got ourselves a real you know, complete retooling of the supply chains that has to happen. Um, and what we're doing is, is, uh, is accelerating that. Uh, what we're doing um, and how we offer our business model, um, we're taking, whether it be, you know, we're dealing with about 500 to 10,000 tons per day on a typical deployments. Uh, we're available globally. Uh, it's about 12 months from contract to first services. Um, and that's for like direct, you know, drop off of trash, or we can landfill mine and deal and address, uh, you know, the elephant in the room is our legacy waste, you know, both atmospherically and as well as the solid waste, um, and specialized tires, um, hazardous wastes, plastics, bulk wastes, you know, agricultural wastes, um, the list goes on and on. It's, it's, uh, it's quite shocking. Uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, how bad uh, we have, um, you know, a waste problem, the atmospheric waste problem is kind of invisible to a lot of people. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, but we're addressing um, both. Um, uh, Carbatura was selected the world's most uh, top 50 most innovative uh, new companies out of 130 countries last year. Uh, and these are the SDGs that uh, we support. Uh, we had a SDG assessment of a, a 96.8 across all 17 SDGs. And the benchmark average in the United States is 37. Obviously, a pretty big room for improvement for the adoption of SDGs in the United States. Um, and basically, there are <clears throat> uh, two divisions, and both can be uh, worked into uh, uh, together. Uh, zero fill is 100% um, recycling of, uh, of all solid waste into reusable materials without any need for sorting or separating of those materials. Um, biocarbon <clears throat> is a high-density vertical farm. 
uh, high density biofactory really because it runs more like a data center. Um, it's the equivalent of 25,000 outdoor agricultural acres in about a five acre footprint. Um, think of uh, an advanced bioenergy carbon capture and storage, um, BEX, is, which is commonly known as, but BEX has some detractors because you think of 25,000 acres, that's a lot of monocropping, you know, uh, water use, biodiversity impact, um, and we're putting it into a five acre footprint and it's all hydroponics. So we're recycling and, and actually remediating water. Uh, the two of them can be used in conjunction uh, with each other. Um, or they can be used separately. Um, and they're both self-powered by um, either the waste, um, the fuels from the waste or the fuels from the uh, biomass. And um, we can focus <clears throat> output to electricity, fuels, heat, narrow band material selections that can be processed through, uh, through the, from the waste um, <clears throat> and uh, post-processing of the materials in things like graphite, graphene, diamonds, um, graphite is a critical uh, mineral uh, for the electrification of all of our fleets. It's a very um, typically there's it's a dirty uh, it's dirty it's mined from the earth, uh, but we're creating renewable uh, carbon neutral or carbon negative um, graphite as well as biographite, biographene, and biodiamonds. Um, I'll get into a little bit further. Um, this is basically. Uh, uh, it's all based on a single unit of our recyclotron. Uh, this does 100 tons per day. It's self-contained and self-powered, and it's containerized for rapid deployment around the world. Um, we're not looking about monolithic, you know, incineration or anything like that. We're not carb. We're not incinerating anything. We're we're breaking everything down at the atomic levels, uh, on the molecular levels, and separating those into various uh, components. Um, this right here is the first is the microwave micro, uh, microwave reactors disintegrating materials into vapors and base solids. Um, we've got uh, um, uh, multiphase generators which drive up to a megawatt of direct energy per reactor uh, to the resonant frequencies of the materials. And then we've got up to 16 discrete material streams as outputs, um, as well as the uh, the gaseous and liquid fuel collections. Um, that um, after the initial start power can self-generate and also si significantly generate a lot of fuel, um, you know, for to support a local microgrid. Um, it's uh, we also have uh, zero emissions gas turbine generators providing for all system power, atmospheric carbon capture, and exhaust uh, gas uh, carbon capture. Uh, so uh, we have uh, negative. This is a negative emissions technology. <clears throat> and basically, if you look at, you know, municipal solid waste, uh, which makes up about 6,000 molecules and all those underlying materials, going through the recyclotron, creating reusable raw material streams into thousands of downstream products. Uh, this is an example of a 2,000 tons per day facility. Uh, we've contracted with a group in India uh, for uh, five of these. Um, it's a multi-billion dollar contract. Um, it fits in about a three acre footprint, uh, can create about 30 megawatts of zero emissions uh, uh, energy, or about 5000 gallons per hour of excess fuels, with additional production of graphite graphene post processing of the char. Um, this is basically a uh, little 3D um, uh, digital twin. Um, that breaks down kind of the, you know, how it looks. And um, it's obviously containerized. So this is what a small 100 ton per day facility or unit looks like. And um, typically the smallest deployment we'll do is uh, five, uh, 500 uh, tons per day. Um, <clears throat> this is... Um, it gets more technical into a life cycle um, assessment of basically municipal solid waste coming in at 100 to 10,000 tons per day. You've got uh, atmospheric CO2 um, that is about you know one pound of CO2 per minute, um, and that's just for the gas turbine generators for the for the air intake. Um, but going into the microwave, microwave uh, multi-phase reactor. You're uh, breaking down everything at about 1,200 degrees Celsius, 
uh, to the resonant frequencies of the underlying materials, creating renewable fuels that can uh, power the gas turbine generators after the initial start energy is utilized. And then it's just self-powered going forward. Uh, and then you see you have water, metal, silica, and more renewable fuels and, um, and the char. Uh, the flue gas is coming from the gas turbine generator. Uh, we bring through our, multi, uh, our microwave plasma reactor that further breaks down the molecules of any uh, exhaust to create char and oxygen. And that's actually brought back into the gas turbine generator to uh, affect you know, greater efficiency there. Um, not to get too technical because this is just going to have a short run through. These are the materials that are currently being processed uh, with this technology. Um, and that essentially breaks down to what is uh, all of municipal solid waste. We're talking, you know, the wind turbine blades, um, roof shingles, car shredder residues, uh, carbon fiber composites, plastic paint, you know, you know, really, really tricky stuff. Uh, this is happening all, you know, this is, um, you know, proven technology. Uh, Post-processing, uh, you've got the first level of processing for these level of outputs. Um, and um, then you have second and third level processing, both thermal and non-thermal um, thermal plasma uh, processing to get into much more uh, refined and high, higher value uh, materials. Uh, graphite, graphene, uh, you know, nanotubes, very, very specialized. Um, I'm not sure if uh, many people here understand the value of uh, graphene and the world of graphene that we're going into. It's a, you know, one atom layer thick um, uh, um, of uh, graphite, uh, but it's 200 times stronger than steel. It's four times more efficient than lithium. It's 10 times more efficient than copper. Um, and we can pull it out of our trash and we can mine it out of the atmosphere. And we're doing this at a fraction of the price of mining it out of the Earth's crust. Um, uh, the timeline of Carbatura, um, first principles were in 2019, integration and partnering in 2020, uh, deployment and financial and technical due diligence was in 2021. We got our first billion in, uh, for deployment financing with uh, National Standard Finance in 2022 in uh, July. Uh, we have deployment models for outside of the U.S. as far as licensing and royalties uh, and selling the systems and then inside of the U.S. as a service model, basically uh, virtual landfill as a service. Uh, first contract was with the group in India for $3.3 billion over uh, 30 years, uh, which is, includes the equipment and royalties. And basically in 2023, we're focusing on uh, the service models and deploying it across the United States and North America, uh, working with several of the you know people that are you know, municipalities, we can work with both municipalities, we can work with private corporations. Um, essentially, we're fully funded, um, which is a big problem with a lot of the impact and things that are pe people are trying to do is all a factor of funding. Uh, what we're offering is basically, um, as long as the organization behind the trash, whether it be a municipality or a corporation, uh, as long as they have decent investment grade credit, um, we can uh, we can deploy um, as long as we get a long-term contract for that waste. Um, and that's essentially um, a 500 ton per day facility is about you know, $120 million. 2000 tons uh, per day is about you know, around four, 450. Um, but um, we'll be working on building you know, capacity um, so we can drive down those costs. Um, but even as it stands now, uh, this is the most efficient way. Uh, you have municipalities, states, you know, across the country trying to figure out how to get diversion to like 75%, which means, you know, 75% goes, doesn't end up in the landfills, in the landfill. But, um, you know, currently the average is much more around in the 30 percentile range, you know, sometimes 40, but, uh, most, uh, places, um, you know, the unfortunate part is, is that you've got these forever chemicals that are being um, um, in their, in our trash, like PFAS, uh, that go into incineration and then they get wafted up into the atmosphere. And now we've got about 
all around the world to finding PFAS in these forever chemicals in our rainwater. So we've got a big, big blowback um, from, you know, basically the 200 year party uh, we've had and our parents are coming home. We've got to clean up the house uh, and we're committed to untrash the planet, um, both the solid waste as well as the atmospheric waste, because those high density biofactories that I spoke of is the most efficient method of capturing atmospheric carbon. And we're not trying to bury it under the ground or hide it or sweep it under the rug. Uh, we're trying to create the raw materials of the next stage of modern civilization. Um, basically, getting rid of trash is really expensive. Uh, our systems make money on the inputs, the carbon captured, the renewable energy, and the outputs. Um, and I uh, think, uh, oh yeah, here we go. This is basically deployments and process. We've got 10,000 tons per day contracted with India. We've got about 26,000 in the funnel. Um, and we're looking at engaging um, um, both developed and developing uh, countries. Um, and as long as they can have like sufficient credit rating or maybe a standby letter of credit behind that as like a credit enhancement, uh, we, can, we can deploy and get rapid deployment globally. Um, uh, the sovereign advisory group uh, based here in the United States, uh, that's our financial partner, has several trillion in assets under their advisory. Uh, so we basically have permanent funding to start untrashing our planet. And um, I think that that's going to go a long way. Um, and, and honestly, my background uh, coming from 20 years in the hedge fund industry, um, always had my thoughts around sustainability. Uh, but this transition from a linear extractive economy to a circular regenerative economy, economy is the biggest opportunity in the history of mankind. Um, uh, designed as an ex, you know, disguised as an existential crisis. Um, so we all have a lot of work to do for the untrashing. You know, happy to take on some, uh, you know, questions or thoughts, um, or if anyone wants to reach out to me for further kind of dialogue, or um, you know, happy to do so. A little short on time for uh, too many questions, but uh, so. Uh, I hope everyone got to see why I was so excited to have Tyler share, um, you know, a tool that can eliminate waste while uh, producing fuel and sequestering carbon at the same time. And and John or uh, Tyler didn't get into it just yet, but they've even got a, a UBI universal basic income model integrated with it uh, to not only provide jobs for those in the communities where these devices sit, but to um, to actually provide uh, support for the the broader community, and so um, one question that I was uh, th that Tyler answered, and and I want to center uh, for not only uh, the speakers uh, that I didn't quite get to ask Forrest or Rupert, um, but Tyler has answered is how can we help? How can the folks in the room help? And it sounds like uh, by in making connections with municipalities. Uh, that are or those in charge of waste management uh, would be a great step forward to get more of these uh, devices into the right places. Is that is that right, Tyler? Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're <clears throat> we're kind of looking for trash with good credit, uh, uh, which is an odd word, but um, um, yeah. And and someone said that uh, asked what kind of things that we can handle. We really don't like to deal with radioactive waste. Uh, that's a problem. Um, and also to your point of uh, universal basic income, uh, similar to the Alaska Permanent Fund that was started in the 70s, it was a bipartisan uh, um, uh, 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 program. Uh, and that's been providing thousands of dollars a year uh, for decades to all citizens of, the, of Alaska from the Alaska pipelines. And we feel like this is the community's trash. This is both current and legacy. Uh, and so we can um, have uh, a tremendous impact um, for uh, for people, uh, uh, you know, the underserved communities. Uh, it does create multi generational uh, jobs, um, and you know, to the point uh, made earlier about our children, um, you know, even my own thirteen year old, I want to, you know, have a, as an apprentice. Um, someone asked for websites. Uh, both uh, carbatura.com is the site for Carbatura. And then, oh, uh, sorry, is, uh, Tyler, just 
so everyone actually can get it. If you don't mind placing it in the chat, that'd be great. And I want to uh, sure. make sure we get we give uh, this the uh, speak or the speak uh, the stage over to uh, Minnie. Um, so thank you so much. Really appreciate being here.